just a really quick video here to show you. Um, I've taken the legs off. Now these will slide into the the uh, collars here, no problem, and then tighten around this area here. So these will be in position when I put them back together. But I need to put the NASA in, and I wanted to show you how I figured out to take apart the body. These screws that are holding in the pivots are Allen screws. Now below, actually I've got two more to remove here. Below I've put some tape, some packing tape, really cheap basic packing tape. And with that, what we're going to do is we're going to be able to hold those aluminum mount screws in place with the packing tape over top of them on the bottom of the frame so that we won't have it all fall apart. Because we're going to be working on that lower plate to install the NASA today and I'll try to do some video of that. Once I get it done I'll definitely do a video but you have to hold your stand off when you're doing this. There we go. Now I should be able to lift this off and put it aside and here with the tape it's holding my bolts in place and you can still put an allen key through that so that's the best way to take apart your HB8 frame and now I can install my NASA straighten out my foam I could have stuck it in the side and stuffed everything in but I wanted to do it properly and this is going to be the gimbal rig so I want to make sure it's a professional build but there's our arms in place we can rotate them, of course, and reset the angles. But um, now we're ready to work on the bottom plate and install our radio gear and everything else. Uh, using the uh, slots that are here and here and here, if we want, for antenna access to the bottom of the quadcopter multirotor. And I wanted to show you also there's two posts here and there's two posts here. Now, these posts here will hold a clamp, one of these clamps, so if you wanted to make this into a, a tricopter, what you would do is you would put a tube through this way all the way long, and then you can work on your own tricopter tail, because I haven't figured that one out yet. But you can actually slide the motor mount if you put two collars on it, two blocks. Uh, you could slide the motor mount on the shaft very, very nicely, uh, quite smoothly if you had a servo attached to it. So you wouldn't actually need a, a pivot point other than the actual arm. Now also you can move the uh, tubing or all the way through the center of the section here and that would make an extra strong multi-rotor so that you would have super uh, strength in that just by adding a tube and two 15 gram mounts so that's an extra thing but you would lose your storage of your flight control in the center you'd have to load it on top here so there's the jumble of parts we've got our motor mounts all set up ready to go I've got the motors ready to go. I'm waiting for the uh, 12 by 38 props, which I'm hoping will uh, be enough to get me off the ground at least. And then we'll be experimenting with larger props uh, for these motors, these 650 kV motors. So there you go, folks. Uh, next step, what I've done and how I've installed it.